There we go, right. So we're gonna need some little scrapettes. So I've cut out some little squares here. Now you guys know I am not predominantly a quilter. So I only show you kind of basic quilting techniques, but hopefully this is a good one because it's great for your scraps. It's great for um, beginners. We're gonna basically make a fabric. And then I was thinking in the coming weeks, we can turn that into a little zipper pouch. So it's kind of like a broken up series. If you're watching this on catch up, I will put in the description below the different stages so you can follow along. Um, before I get into that though, I'm going to get back to here because I have something very exciting to tell you that is happening next week. If you're watching this on replay, I will pop a link to the club that I'm going to talk about as well in, des in the description too. You can also find the bag makers box, which I briefly mentioned before, um, in there as well. So next week we have the bag making challenge. I would love for you all, if you're watching live or before next week, or even during next week, to come and join us. It's completely free, there's absolutely no obligation. It's kind of my way of showing you a little bit of what the club is like. Um, basically, it's gonna be full of inspiration. We've got a little sew along as we go through. I've cut that up into three or four lives that I'll be going live within the Facebook group, so you do need to be part of the Facebook group. All you have to do is join the link that I will put in the description below. Join us there, sign up, and then you'll get all the details, find out where the Facebook group is, etc. And you will be let in on Monday when the party begins. So I'd love if you could join us there. If you're watching after next week, um, do check out the description because there's a link in there to the 77 Club, which is basically what I'm talking about that we're doing next week. It's an online virtual party. I know lots of members are watching live. Shout out to the 77 Club. Um, and yeah, I think you'll find it's really fun. So check that out. I'm going to pop back over to my other screen and we'll get on with the tutorial. I'm just going to move my cameras around a little bit on my computer screen so that I can see your lovely comments. Um, the pockets took me the longest on heydays. Oh yeah, they can be quite tricky. Donna says the club is an amazing community and the box is fabulous. Thank you, Donna. Um, Jill, it is 2 p.m. on Monday within the group. You will see everything when you join in there. Don't worry if you can't make it at 2 p.m. on Monday because it will all be there on catch up. Okay, so these little squares I have cut out. Now I wanted to also talk a little bit about picking out your scraps and having them go together because there's a little bit, it's kind of a science but not too much of a science. So there's two ways you can pick colour choices and um, we did do a kind of dive into this on a previous live. I will try and link that in the description too. But basically a cheat way to do it is to get one colorway. So let's say we're gonna go, let's go with this one, because this is kind of the inspiration. Um, you may or may not recognize this fabric. I know that some of you live will recognize this fabric. I'm not gonna say anymore. You know what I'm talking about. One of my favorite fabrics. Um, so we pick out one colorway, one pattern, and then we can pick out individual colors because we know that that's gonna go with the colors. So if we pick out that pink for example and there I found this little scrap that has got that pink in it so we know that those two are going to go that's kind of a cheat way if we keep picking out these colors we know that they're all going to match so we've got this kind of pale yellow that's also in there very similar we've also got this this kind of I don't know like a watery bluey green which I absolutely love I've used that for a lining for a bag so I've got that little scraps we often get scraps as bag makers don't we because we kind of tend to use big pieces and not so much little pieces and then this one is uh, a rainbow so rainbows go with most things and because I have picked out different colors I feel that the rainbow goes with it too hope you agree so that's a little cheat way to do it to, when you're picking out your scraps don't I don't tend to kind of just kind of go willy-nilly and pick out different colors I want to make sure that they go so that is a cheats way of doing it um, obviously you've got the color wheel and all the color theory 
we do have an amazing masterclass in the 77 Club from our color expert, Momtaz, who came in. She did a whole um, class, a one hour class on color theory, which was absolutely brilliant, so inspirational. But anyway, um, obviously you could do the opposite of your color wheel, you know, this, this green, this kind of tealy green and pink, or pretty much opposite on the color wheel. So you can go that route too. But picking out the colors from one pattern is a cheat way. Um, that's okay, Susan, if you can't make it, don't worry. Um, Bargello. Yes, I think it might be Bargello, what I'm going to do. Uh, love that fabric blue. Who's it from? This one. Is that the one you're talking about? Do you know what? I don't actually know. I'm sorry, that's not helpful, is it? Not helpful at all. I will try and find out, though. Right, so you've got your little squares. I have cut mine at two and a half inches. And then, oh, I also wanted to show you this ruler, which is um, Creative Grids. Absolutely love Creative Grids. I love this ruler. Obviously, a lot of quilting rulers do have this. And I love that it has a half inch end on one side and then an inch on the other side, if that makes sense. For cutting out these squares, it just makes it a lot easier to put it on that half inch side and then follow a solid line when you're cutting. So highly recommend if you don't have um, a ruler that has a half inch on one side that you get one but of course you don't need it for this tutorial so then got a little eyelash on there let me get rid of that <laughs> um, we have also got some interfacing here this is fusible interfacing just realize you probably can't see what I have done on there because I've used quite a pale friction pen but what you want to do is cut it out to be the size of your project now there's a little caveat to that. These squares are gonna end up as two inches, not as two and a half. So when you're cutting out your interfacing, your fusible interfacing, and this is F220, Velizaline F220, which is the regular non-woven interfacing that I use for all my bag making. It's kind of, they call it a medium weight, but it's actually quite got a very like soft handle. It's not, you can get um, like the hemline one in a package and that's quite papery. I would definitely recommend you get a, a softer one like this F220. And then you're going to draw on there two and a half inch squares. And this is the bit that you want to get as accurate as you can. These bits doesn't really matter so much if you've gone a little bit wonky. It's not the end of the world. As long as you've not gone kind of like way off, um, then, you know, a little, an, a millimetre or so here or there is going to be fine. Or an eighth of an inch, I should say. Um, so you want to draw out, I've used a friction pen, two and a half inches on the uh, non-fusible side. So you can feel the difference if you've not used this before because one side is rougher than the other. I'm going to presume most people have because I do do a lot of bag making and it is kind of integral to bag making. But if you haven't, one side is rougher, that is the glue side. The other side is smooth, that is the non-glue side. And what you're going to do is, I've just realised I need something and I'm hoping that it is nearby it is. You're going to flip it over. Again, it's kind of tricky for you to see on here, but I can see, let me put, uh, match it up a little bit with my squares underneath as well. I'll push it up a bit so you can see. And I've got the glue side facing up. And like I say, you want to work out how many squares to draw out because each square is going to end up being two inches, not two and a half inches. So if you've got a certain size to make, certain rectangle, certain square, all of that, you're going to need to work that out. Then you're going to get your cotton, your fabric squares, and you're going to lay them over top, over the top, in the pattern that you would like them to be. So we're matching up the squares that I've drawn, which I drew on the back, because it's hard to draw it on the rough side. That's why I've drawn it on the back. So you're going to match those up, and I'm just going to do a pattern. To be honest, I did not think what pattern I'm going to do before I started. Maybe I should have, um, but that's okay. We're going to do it a little bit on the hoof for that part. And I'm just going to lay them on 
and I can move them around how I want to so that they are in the pattern that I want them to be. And I'm going to go along and do that for all of them. And while you're while I'm doing that, I'm going to see if there's any questions or comments. My nails match. <laughs> they probably do. Well, my nails are my branding this time, this month. I've got little scissors. I thought I'm doing so many um, things this month that I should, I should take the opportunity to do a little bit of um, why not? You know, I've not done it before, so let's do some branding on my nails this time. <laughs> why not, eh? Uh, because, in case you don't know, I am at the Stitch Festival in a couple of weeks, less than two weeks, we will be there, which is absolutely bonkers. I've been frantically um, packaging everything up, everything's got labels on and all in little bags. It has taken me a long time but it's going to look really good and I'm really excited to bring all the extra products that are normally in the bag makers box. They are going to be um, available for people. So um, that's all going to be there and there's going to be special offers on the club and the bag makers box as well. So if you're coming along, um, do pop by and say hello. Now I have, I do know I've only got four. Actually, do you know what? I thought I had five. That would have been good if I had five. I swear I cut five of them. That's annoying. That's really annoying because I could have, that could have been the nice fifth one in that corner. But you know what? Never mind. Say la vie. Let's see what we're going to do here. Let's do, I guess we need to do this one. and carry on i like to use non-directional prints for these but you could use directional and just keep kind of flipping them around do you know what i haven't done is i haven't i haven't ended up using that rainbow in the end did i that's fine let's see if we can get away with not using that at all then i'm going to do that oh and then i've run out i'll have to do i'll do this one in that corner there we go so Got a little pattern, is that Bargello? I think Wendy O did something similar on Sewing Street a while back. She probably did. It is a popular technique. And I have done a whole memory quilt with this technique over on my channel. Now, I probably should have done this originally on my ironing board, but I didn't. So there we are. I'm now going to try and lift this over to, let's see, let's see if we can do this without it all. Oh, this is a real big test. There we go, I think I did it. Now, here's a little tip. Once you've done this, we're then, you may have guessed it because the glue is facing up, we are then going to press that in place so that it is all stuck to the interfacing. And try and get all those little bits as neat as we can, but it isn't the end of the world if we don't, because our next step is going to make it all look really good. So I have put a Teflon sheet on top. This is a Teflon sheet. I do have it linked, I'm pretty sure, in the description below. You can also use baking paper if you uh, want a cheaper way of doing it. I just like this because it doesn't, it's not crinkly on the camera and of course it lasts pretty much for forever. Um, I'm going to get my iron and press that in place. They do say eight seconds for each bit. I'm going to go a little bit quicker. I did have five. Yeah, so where's that gone then? Have I put two on top of each other? I'm just going to double check that I haven't done that. Probably flung one on the floor or something. I'll find it afterwards, no doubt. Yeah, never mind. It's okay. So I can keep pressing as we go. And I just feel like sometimes, you know, often we're making 
quite complicated patterns and sometimes you just want a little quick project and this is the kind of thing that is so satisfying because you take your scraps that whoops that um you know you weren't going to do anything with and you turn it into something amazing and this quilting technique just is so much easier than you know a lot of different techniques that you can do in quilting not that there's anything wrong with that at all but sometimes it's nice to make life a little bit easier so I'm pressing that all in place hopefully it's nearly there I'll move the iron around now because it's mainly in place I know I'm not going to pick up you know kind of lift the corners as I go there we go. I think, I think, I think we are there. Just get rid of some of that fluff and then we will move over to the machine. So that is now a piece of fabric. So you can probably guess what we're going to do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move it across to there so that I can move my camera around so that you can, in fact, see my sewing because otherwise you won't be able to see me sew right so 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 let me bring that over here and move around and then through the magic the wonder of modern technology there we are so we've got our kind of fabric that we've made then what you're going to do is you're going to fold it and it will naturally fold you see that so I've just folded that right sides together and then we're going to sew along that fold and you've probably guessed it we're going to carry on going along and I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance uh, just getting into a bit of quilting after cutting my scraps into squares. This is super useful, Emma. Oh, brilliant. That's great to hear. Uh, I think you did put two piles together. I probably did, Stacey, but it's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm over it now. <laughs> but thank you for your help. I really do appreciate it. I didn't mean that in a, in a negative way. Um, but I don't want to have your wait, waiting while I kind of hunt around for it okay so I'm gonna do a two and a half stitch length there's probably quilters watching this saying oh no you haven't done it like that or you know but apologies to anyone that I'm completely decimating um, the quilting world And look at that. How cool is that? It's exactly on point. So we're going to keep going. So I've done that first edge. I'm going to fold it along to the second one. And follow along my quarter of an inch again. that I don't know if you can see can you see just here whoops get it in the camera um, there's a little bit missing on there if you can see that on this pale yellow square but it's totally fine because it's all held in the interfacing so that's what I was saying about if you cut it and it's not perfectly perfectly accurate it, it's not the end of the world Fold it again. Oh, is that 
the... Have I run out of thread? Oh, <laughs> you know what it is? It's because it's going onto the white bit of thread. So I couldn't see it, so I thought I'd run out of thread because I'm using <laughs> I'm using a variegated thread. Just because that's what I had to hand. But it completely threw me then. I thought I'd run out of bobbin. I didn't think I was that low. And we just carry on going along. I think I've got one left on this one and then you'll see how we do the other way. I'll show you what it looks like. Also while I'm sewing this, hopefully you can hear me above the machine, um, uh, last week on the live I started a new series which is basically bag making news. So at the end of the month, on the last Thursday of the month, oh dear, I've caught some thread in there, you can probably see that. Um, on the last Thursday of the month, I'm gonna do a roundup of bag making news. So if you see anything that, like a cool reel or something, um, please do share it with me in the Sew, Create and Craft Facebook group, which you can find a link to in the description below as well and we will share it, we will talk about it. If you see any like brand new tools or anything like that, new patterns, things like that, share it with me so I can share it with everybody else. Um, an ad slipped in, oh yes, um, they do that sometimes. Do you recommend backstitching or is it just habit? It's just habit, Esther. <laughs> uh, I don't think quilters really backstitch, but I don't know, I feel like it's gonna come undone if I don't do that. So there we go. I'm going to flip over to the other camera and then um, we will talk about what we're going to do. So we've done it all going this way. Now we need to do it all going that way because otherwise, of course, we've got those raw edges. Maybe you can see up there. So what we need to do first is we need to cut up that seam allowance. So we're just going to get our scissors in between, probably going to need smallish scissors for this. And you're going to just snip all the way along that fold through that la one layer. Doesn't really matter if you're wonky donkey like I just was there. Um, get inside there. Speaking of wonky donkey, uh, which is a book by the way, <laughs> In case you're wondering where I'm going with this. Um, it was World Book Day today, which was fun. Um, who, has anybody been making costumes? Apologies for the ads. I can't really control that, I'm afraid, when they come on. So we go back in here. I really, you know what, I reach for these scissors a lot. These are the Prim Love scissors and they're quite sturdy, but they're, they're also small. So they have quite a lot of power behind them. So they're quite good little ones if you need some. Although nothing can beat the old trusty Fiskars, the orange handle Fiskars. I don't quite know where mine are at the minute. I made, uh, oh, hang on. I really enjoyed your alternative chat last ne week with the showcasing other patterns and events. Oh, that's brilliant, Linda. I had a lot of good feedback on that. So it's definitely something I will do going forward. It was really fun to research and I'm sort of keeping my eyes out now for anything. Then I'm gonna take note of new releases and stuff, but I do need your guys' help. So if you see anything cool, do share it in the Sew, Create and Craft. Uh, feel free to tag me, Emma Brassfield, in there so that I can see it and then I can add it to my list. Uh, the tutorial, I remember they just snipped the interfacing at the seam. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I guess you could, but I don't know. I kind of want to open it out, but maybe that's, I don't know, maybe that's just me. 
Uh, I made a Beano Dennis Menace for my son. Yes, I saw it, Penny. It was awesome. Uh, managed to get granddaughter's apron done in time. That is great news, Susan. Yes, I saw that you had a, a last minute rush. So I guess that you're celebrating or your granddaughter is celebrating World Book Day tomorrow then, if you're doing it today, because ours was today. I don't know why suddenly it's all different days. And if anybody's watching from across the pond, is it just in the UK that we do it? Or is this an international thing? I feel like I haven't seen that many American costumes, but I might be completely wrong. So there we go. I've kind of finger pressed them. Probably would, you know, properly press them. And then we're going to go back the other way and do it the other way. So let's go over to make sure my cursor's on the right button. And we're going to sew exactly like we did before. I think um, just my, with my background of making costumes and clothes that I just naturally want to press the seams open. <laughs> I know in quilting often you press them to go one way, don't you? And I'm not even using pins, but it's probably absolutely against all kinds of quilting laws. But let's see, let's see if we can do it without pins. Um, it's definitely easier with the interfacing, you know. Um, if I didn't have, if I wasn't doing the interfacing technique, I would um, be using pins. Okay, so that's that one. Let's move along to the next one. Make sure I don't catch that first one underneath as we go. Uh, I won't so much tag you as I often share my tester posts, which I am really grateful that you permit. Oh, don't worry, Linda, yeah. Um, I will, I will keep an eye out for tester posts anyway, um, so don't worry, I won't, definitely won't miss those. Um, and yeah, you're very welcome. I want everybody to, you know, see all the cool stuff, so. It's fun to see what everybody's doing. And I want to see all the cool stuff too, because I might want to buy it. <laughs> uh, her school always dresses up on the Friday. Oh, okay. Rules are made to be broken. <laughs> yeah, don't tell the quilting police. I'm probably doing all kind, making all kinds of things wrong, but I don't know. I think um, although I wasn't in wasn't in straight costume, I was I was always in creature costume or special effects costume, and it was very much how can we get this done? Maybe there's rules, but maybe we need to think outside the box maybe there are no rules and we have to make our own rules and uh <laughs> yeah that's just kind of it's just kind of how I how I roll I'm afraid okay we're gonna do that last one sometimes I make up the rules <laughs> as I go along right this is the last one now I'm really hoping at the Stitch Festival that someone is selling clappers because I really want to get a clapper. It's about the only tool that I think I don't have in my arsenal at the moment. But it's the kind of thing you don't really see. Like I wish there was, I need to find a wood, is there any, are there any uh, uh, woodworkers out there? <laughs> any woodworkers watching? Part people with partners that are woodworkers can we get them to make some beautiful clappers please because all the beautiful ones I've seen are all in America and they cost a fortune to ship um, 
That's so cool. Well, this is so cool. That's good. I'm glad you like it. Um, Chewbacca Prime sample, yes. Uh, I don't have a clapper either. Well, I guess you'll be looking for one too at Stitch Festival. Sewing Street has them. Huh. I will have a look, Sandra. Thank you. If you keep one dimension the same but vary the other, you can get some cool Bargello effect. Oh, one dimension the same. Oh, I think I understand what you mean. I mean, going one way is we do the same, but the other way going slightly different. I think that's what you mean. A clapper is a wooden kind of, well, it's a tool, wooden tool, kind of like so big, I guess you get different sizes, but it's made out of a certain type of wood that um, takes the heat out of it. So when you, you do your pressing and then you put the clapper on top, and it takes the heat out of the fabric so it cools it down quicker and it helps to few kind of not fuse is the wrong word but it kind of helps the fibers to remember the way that you want it to go does that make sense my dad made mum one i'm still waiting for mine needs to be beech wood okay yes i knew it needed to be a, a type of wood i don't have a clapper but my husband has just made me a rivet press base with holes in for dies linda we are not jealous at all i could ask him if he could make a clapper too though yes you could and then tell him that all your friends want one as well <laughs> and i'll uh, i'll see him at stitch festival next year <laughs> with the stand seriously though i think there's a big uh, big gap in the market for for beautiful wood you know wood made things like that in the sewing community there is somebody in the us and if there's anybody watching that knows feel free to comment who they are um that makes really beautiful rivet press bases um i feel like their name is hannah i don't know hopefully someone will correct me i feel like it's like wood by hannah or something like that any road we need well if you're in the US then obviously you've got you've got one there but if there's anyone in the UK we need to know who they are so as you can see I'm just doing exactly what I did before I'm just going along cutting through those seams and then the final thing is to give it a good old press get it all nice and flat uh logo oh esther logo clappers that is a good idea need a collaboration with someone don't i i'll share a photo of the base in the group yes please it's becky in the us i think and they're 80 dollars. becky okay i've got obviously got the name completely wrong apologies becky um right let me i need to swing this one around don't i back onto the ironing board um dad is a carpenter by trade also made me a gadget to help make my crackers oh yes because you make amazing crackers don't you that's very clever indeed and very helpful okay i'm gonna get my trusty sorry wiggling around the uh camera there i'm gonna get my trusty teflon sheet again a little bit tricky to see what we're doing with the teflon sheet do you know what i might not be able to use oh do you know what as well is that my iron hasn't been sitting on the base so it's going to be stone cold so bear with me a second i will just plug it in and hopefully it's not gone completely cold as i Try it. This would be good for the little, uh, what they called quilted bear irons. And if you watch Sewing Street, did you see they have the Oliso iron? The mini Oliso iron is coming to Sewing Street on Tuesday, I think. Hi, Danielle. Just popped in. Hello. Welcome. Um, yeah, so that looks really exciting. Looks like a really nice iron. There we go, let's see if we can get that going now. I don't think my iron's very happy that I've woken it up. I think it was having a nice little snooze. 
laughing at me because I didn't put it back in its base. <laughs> So yeah, I've had lots and lots of questions about the bag making challenge next week. I don't want anybody to worry. I've had loads of emails, probably had over 20 emails from people asking why they haven't been let in the group. Um, I know that may seem like it's quite frustrating, but nobody has been let in the group. There's only a couple of admins and myself in there. So you're not missing anything. It's there's no party going on yet. It's very dull and boring in there. Lots of tumbleweeds. So you're not missing anything. I will let everybody in on Monday around about the same time. Obviously, won't all be exactly the same time. Um, and then everything will become clear as we do the welcome party. I'll tell you everything that we're going to do. Um, that is going to be on Monday at... Um, two o'clock in there again don't worry if you can't make it live you can watch it afterwards if you can make it live that would be brilliant this is when I burn my fingers um, and then we will be going live I think it is 11 a.m each day but again don't worry if you can't make it at that time you can watch it on replay and all will be explained as we go through and you don't have to sew. If you want to come in and you don't want to do any sewing or you don't have time or just don't fancy it, don't want to, you can still come in and you can still win prizes. There's prizes, I think there's probably only one, is there one prize maybe for actually sewing and the rest are for other things that I will explain. So there we go. How cool is that? Look, at, I quite like the back actually. Quite like the back of that. Look at that. You would never guess that that's how we made that. Look at all those points. You saw me, no pins, not one pin as I was going through. Look at that. What a cool technique. How have you not burnt your fingers yet? <laughs> I don't know, I think I might have asbestos fingers from all the ironing. So yeah, so. Next week, we will turn that into a very simple little zipper pouch um, pencil case. I think we'll do it that way. That makes more sense, doesn't it? So if you want to sew along, then you could definitely do this and make one yourself for next week. Um, so you can kind of get two, two things next week. So I'll see you back here on next Thursday. Let me quickly do this and then do this and then I can bring us back to there. Hello. Um, so glad you found that useful and helpful. Um, so much quicker and neater. So clever. Amazing. Lovely. Um, never thought of doing that. Brilliant. I want to have a go, but no, mine won't look so perfect. Well, you don't know until you have a go, Hilary. I know you are very good at sewing, so don't do yourself down. I bet it will be amazing. Um, I have exceptionally sensitive finger tips, fin finger tips, I can't speak. I cannot iron like that. Oh, sorry, Linda. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't help that I'm doing it live as well because, I, you know, I'm thinking of 20 million things. So um, that makes it a bit trickier. Um, so hopefully you don't have to do that as well. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining me. Don't, re don't, don't remember, don't forget, we have our free bag making challenge next week. If you're curious as to what that is, you can find that in the description below. Or if you're watching on replay, you're gonna find out about the 77 Club. We would love for you to join us over in there. Um, and I shall see you also in the So Create and Craft. Do share your makes in there. We all love seeing what you're getting up to. Do um, share any cool stuff. And it's, it's called So Create and Craft for a reason. It's not just bag making. It's not just sewing. You can share anything creative. Cool graffiti that you've seen, totally fine. As long as it's creative, you can post it in there and we all love to see. Because I know that we get inspiration from all sides of um, you know, the creative realm. So do share that in there. And you can find that in the description too. If you're watching on replay as well, do let us know in the comments because I've been following along with the live comments. So I haven't, won't have seen your comment yet. 
And if you don't already subscribe, feel free to subscribe and follow along. I go live every Thursday at 8 p.m. I won't be on the 22nd of March, but you'll see all the lives scheduled and up there. Do come back and join us for another chat. Okay, everybody, take care. Thanks so much.